this video, I'd like to demonstrate the method that I've used to create what I call compound eye features. That is, eye features that are positioned or that cut in two directions. So, uh, yeah, just want to give a quick example. This one, I, I don't remember what the actual name of the feature is. I call it the IKEA hole because I've put together so much IKEA furniture. Uh, in my life, uh, that's what I associate it with. But basically, it's going to be a hole, a larger bore where a camming nut goes in, and then there's a hole that goes perpendicular to that where a peg comes in, and that's how you build a lot of joinery. So you'll probably recognize it as we build the feature, but I just want to go ahead and show you just another technique for building more complicated type of eye features. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a 3D model here. So I'm going to do a box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this off the origin. And the reason I do this, which you'll see in a second, <clears throat> is that I like to utilize a point to control the location. And I find that a work point can work really, really nicely. So the other thing I've already done, but I'll just show you quickly, is I've created a bunch of user parameters. So the user parameters are what I'm going to use to control the uh, sizing and the orientation of the component. So you'll see, I'll, I'll kind of describe them as I go, but I've got a distance for the top hole from the edge of the whole diameter, the whole height, and the whole angle. I'll explain all that. And then for the large bore, I've got the bore diameter and then the overall bore depth. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and model this and I'll explain these user parameters as I'm going through it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a locator point. And the locator point I'm going to use is just going to be the center point of a loop of edges. So I'm going to use a special work point and just grab this front face. So once you've got that front face, you'll see the work point there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an offset work plane. So the idea here is that there's a large hole that gets bored into a board, a board. And then there's another hole here for a peg, a smaller hole. And the peg slides in there. You place the camming nut in. And then you turn the camming nut. And that's what forms the secure joint. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an offset <clears throat> work plane from here, but I'm actually going to go negative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go negative and then grab my parameter. I'm going to go negative hole edge distance. So what that's doing is that that means the center of the hole will be drilled here at that point in the top of the board. So I hit OK. <clears throat> And then this is this plane that I'm going to use as my sketch. So it's not a bad idea sometimes to name them. I'm not going to worry about that in this video. But I will click on that plane to create <clears throat> my sketch. And so then the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project the geometry of that work point. You can pick it either here or in the graphics window. Right click, hit OK. And then I'm going to hit the F7 key. Now there's my projected point. So from here, it's really a question of just making the geometry. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to create the geometry, then go back and dimension it later. Sometimes you can add the geometry as you go. I may do a mix of both, but I just want people to be able to clearly understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to start out by creating a circle. So I click up here, grab my circle, and then I'm going to make this the bore diameter. So if I click here to create the circle, then I can right click, do a general dimension. And then you can choose this little arrow to the right, list your parameters, and that's where you can get the bore diameter. So there's my bore diameter. So far so good. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a line. So the other thing that I want is I want to be able to create a hole that is exactly centered here that goes straight up but it could be at other angles as well so I'm going to create a construction line that goes straight across like so so then what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go ahead and create a two-point rectangle. So I'm going to start my rectangle here at the middle, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm actually going to hold the control key down so it doesn't apply. Well, no, I'll apply geometric constraints. And then I'll click. So what happened is if I hit F8, that made a, a horizontal there, which I do not want. So I right click on that and I delete that horizontal. Because what I want to be able to do is to grab my point here. And if you ever have trouble grabbing a hold of the point, you can just hit F9. But I actually want that to be able to pivot. And I'll explain that a little bit later, but that's what I need this to do, so I can even pivot that right now. But this is going to be the hole uh, that the peg fits into. So I'm going to click on this line here, and I'm going to convert it to a center line. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply some dimensions. So right-click, do general dimensions. And so if I pick this and that one, now this becomes what we call a linear diameter dimension. And I can make that the whole diameter. And then we also need a height, so we can click on this line. And then if I left click before I get either the vertical or the horizontal, I can get the aligned dimension, place that, and then I can list the whole height. So very cool. And then last but not least in this design, I'm going to click here and the center line. And this is what I'm going to be using for my whole angle. Awesome. So this is the basis for my eye feature. It allows me to create a bore, which you'll see in a second. And then I can center that hole <clears throat> wherever I need to within the bore cavity. And then we'll be able to make this compound feature. So let's go ahead and finish the sketch. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, let's do the bore first. So I do extrude and I'm going to grab the central bore. And I want this to be a cut, but here's the rub. We want to be able to cut all the way to this front face and then all the way from the front, front face to the bore depth. So in this particular example, we're going to go ahead and do an asymmetric. And so the one inch distance is this one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make an equation because we know that there's an overall depth for the bore, but we know that part of the way through we have that sketch plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab the bore depth, but that pushes it all the way out the back. That's not what we want. So then we have to subtract because we're going from this front face to the bore depth, but we've already gone in that whole edge distance we actually end up subtracting that whole edge distance. So now it goes, in this case, 0.625, that's what we started with on this surface, all the way to back here. <clears throat> and then what we can do on the front face is we can just grab the whole edge distance it's because that's the distance that the plane is offset. So even on a more exotic feature like this, you can use regular inventor stuff like the asymmetric extrude to create that particular bore. So you see it doesn't go all the way through, but if we wanted to measure it to verify the bore depth, we see that that indeed is 0.625. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to grab this sketch. We're gonna share the sketch by right clicking on it, then doing a share sketch. And then for this one, we're going to go ahead and use the Revolve. So I press the R key, pick the profile, oops, pick the axis, and we're going to do a, a cut. So now that would be the peg cut feature. We hit OK. And now we've got our compound eye feature. So I would recommend saving this. I've already saved a copy of it, so I'll just call it Compound Feature 2. But you always want to save a library of your eye features. That way if you have to go make a, 
a one-off or republish. It's a lot faster sometimes than trying to edit or do a copy and save of the eye feature itself. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to manage. I'm going to actually extract this eye feature. I'm going to pick on the features I want, which is this extrusion and the revolution. But I also want to get the point. So what I do is I'm going to grab the work plane. So the work plane and the point will help me control the position because the work plane is offset from whatever my given surface is. And the work point is that central locator. So I'm going to grab the work plane and the work point. So now when I go to position it, I'm going to pick a plane, I'm going to pick a point, and it's going to position my feature just like how I published it. I'll rename this one. I'll call it Compound Ikea, just again because I cannot think of a better name for it. And um, we could add ranges and limits in here. That's standard type stuff. I'm not going to worry about that today. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. So I've already, again, I'll leave it as Compound Ikea, hit save, and now let's test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a part. I'm going to make a box. We'll do a 12 by 12 so we can see what this looks like. And then uh, we'll do 2 inches just in case we want to play with different gaps and depths. And then what we need to do is we need to create some points. So I'm just going to create a couple of points. so that we can see how this works. So I'll finish that sketch. And then using the insert eye feature tool, I'm just going to go ahead and insert an eye feature. And look, here's our compound IKEA. Hit open. So for the references, it's looking for a plane and a point. So if I click the plane and I click one of these points, next should show up here and then yeah, I'll go ahead and hit finish so there is the feature but uh oh it didn't go all the way through that's okay here's what we can do we can also right click on it and we can edit it so I want to show this edit feature because that can <clears throat> be very helpful uh, and so what we've got is we've got the opportunity to come back in once we edit the eye feature to make some changes. So I know the whole height's not long enough, so I'm going to leave you with another quick tip. If we click on that whole height, hit the arrow to the right, we can actually measure. So if I click on the measure tool, I can find my point, whoops, find my point, find a plane, and it measured the 1.622. I'll do that again because it kind of uh, my select other was turned on. So I measure, I grab the point, I grab the top plane, and there's that 1.622. So I hit finish. So what's nice about using that technique is no matter where your eye feature is located, you can uh, go ahead and make use of it. Uh, you can edit the values and, and reposition it. So I'm going to do that one more time and just show you what it looks like to be able to adjust the angle as well. So if I click on the face, click on a point, now I can come over here. Well, my angle is 90. What if I want that to come right out to the front, to the right? I'll set that to zero. And if I do the whole height, I'll measure that from the point to the surface that I get that value, and then I hit finish. So by giving it an angle control, now I could shoot that hole out any angle that I want. So again, just a short, short-ish video showing how you can create these compound eye features, and um, with a little bit of forethought, you can create one that's quite flexible to use in a number of different scenarios. So I hope you find this helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. Otherwise, have a blessed day.